Halsey's gigantic third fleet steams at full strength through Japanese home waters on a mission of destiny to carry out, along with other Allied forces, the first historic landings on the soil of Japan. 400 fighting ships led by the mighty 45,000-ton USS Missouri move in on the enemy in a stunning demonstration of Allied sea power. The fleet that the Japanese meant to destroy forever at Pearl Harbor comes back to stay. Admiral Halsey and the officers and men of the United States Navy are nearing the final goal. On Okinawa Island, 600 miles southeast, hundreds of United States transport planes stand ready to fly the 11th Airborne Division to Tokyo. An appropriate jumping off place for a last triumphant journey. Here on bloody Okinawa, the Japanese made their final desperate stand. Here, at cruel cost, they were at last smashed. The 11th Airborne's planes pass by Mount Fujiyama, occupation bound. Official pictures show first transports arriving at Atsugi Airdrome, just outside Japan's capital. Following instructions of the Supreme Allied Command, Japanese officers walk out to give over the airfield. This is surrender. Major General Swing, 11th Airborne Chief, and Lieutenant General Eichelberger, commanding the 8th Army, confer with the Japanese. Over Atsugi, first of thousands of Japanese positions, a new flag waves. transports land, bringing up thousands of troops to occupy Japan's main island. Japanese military police are put under Allied control to be used in the early stage of the occupation. Matsugi Airfield bears the marks of the terrific punishment administered by B-29s and carrier planes. Simultaneously with the airborne landings, Halsey's ships in Sagami Bay, just below Tokyo Bay, prepare to move through Uraga Strait toward Yokosuka, Yokohama, and Tokyo. A Navy plane brings up a distinguished visitor to Halsey's flagship, the Missouri. In the hour of victory, Admiral Chester Nimitz, Pacific Fleet Commander, comes to say, well done to a valiant deputy. Acting on the pre-arranged MacArthur terms, a group of Japanese harbor pilots comes alongside the cruiser San Diego for the trip through Uraga Strait. The San Diego is the flagship of the specially created Task Force 31, Admiral Badger commanding, which will land American Marines and sailors inside Tokyo Bay. The Japanese give full information on mines, soundings, and coastal defenses as Task Force 31 sails past the strait toward its first objectives. The wreckage of Japanese sea power is everywhere. The 33,000-ton Japanese battleship Nagato, hit July the 18th by Third Fleet aircraft, lies out of action in the harbor but some of her guns may still be dangerous. Ship and crew are taken in custody by the Navy. The Nagato is turned over to her new captain, Thomas Flynn, former executive officer of the USS Iowa. Once one of the most powerful ships in the world, the Nagato now flies the Stars and Stripes. Amphibious invasion, a pattern made familiar by United States forces. Now the barges and Marines are going in for the last time. The objective is a fort near Futsu, opposite the Yokosuka naval base. Fully equipped for combat if it becomes necessary, the Marines carry out their assignment with flawless timing.
across the bay at Yokosuka itself, still more Marines, part of a total landing force of 10,000 press into shore to take possession of the important naval base in the name of the United Nations. This base, with its approaches, was one of the most heavily armed bastions of the whole Pacific. The USS San Diego docks at Yokosuka, first ship to tie up to a Japanese pier. Surrender negotiations are brief and unceremonious. Yokosuka passes into American hands. Suki Field, airborne troops are still flocking in. Within a few hours, the Tokyo area holds thousands of American soldiers. Quickly, the airborne troopers leave their planes and assemble for deployment. There were 300,000 Japanese soldiers in this area only two weeks ago. All have been disarmed and removed. Now another plane wings low over Atsugi. Inside is the leader of the army that fought back from Bataan. The leader now of all the United Nations troops, ships, planes that smashed a terrible enemy. The Supreme Commander, Douglas MacArthur. General MacArthur is greeted by the leader of his 8th American Army, General Eichelberger, hero of New Guinea and Manila. Japanese trucks, ordered for immediate use to transport occupation forces through the area, are lined up along the edge of the airstrip. Soon, quantities of American equipment arrive. But now, infantrymen load up for prearranged missions, ready to spread out and make secure the Allied hold around Tokyo. American prisoners of war, taken by the Japanese in the Philippines in 1942, are a glad reception committee. They'll be going home now. MacArthur inspects the Atsugi Air Base. A happy, victorious day for the Supreme Commander and for millions upon millions of the peoples of the world.